Congressman Doug Collins, the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, who has been investigating the investigators who started the Russia probe. Congressman, good to see you. Nice to see you as well. A few moments ago, one of the leaders on the Democratic side, Jim Clyburn, said there's not a majority for impeachment in the House. So what's the point of all this? The point is they have a base to feed. And that base to feed is rapidly saying we want to impeach the president. But they got a problem. The problem is the president came, the Mueller report came back. It did not show what they wanted. There's no collusion, no obstruction. And when they look at it, they look at an economy that is booming. They look at a president who is in control. And then they have to feed two different bases. One says impeach. One says go after Trump, do everything they can to destroy the president. While the others in their caucus are saying, we don't want this. Our voters don't want this. And they want to move slowly. So they look, they lose on the politics. They lose on the facts. And so now the American people are the ones losing in the end because they're not doing anything with the majority they have in the House. Well, Joy Behar was on The View saying that they're calling you out, calling every Republican in Congress, all Republican leaders, and said you're not standing up to this president and you should go to jail. Watch. <laughs> Nixon would be so, he says, I was in the wrong period of history because <laughs> he would have gotten away with everything just like this corrupt president yeah. is getting away with. This is an unbelievable corruption, corrupt president, corrupt administration, and the Republican Party is right behind him, and they all should be thrown into jail as far as I'm concerned. How do you react to that when only Justin Amash, as you know, is your only colleague who is saying there should be impeachment? Well, it's really interesting to have a talk show host who's not looked at any of the, probably not read the Mueller report, not looked at the things that I've had the privilege to look at, and also look at it from the perspective of she had her mind made up a long time ago. She didn't like this president. She didn't like him as a candidate. And so now they're trying to tell us that a president who's doing exactly what he said he was going to do, to do and work with an economy, to work with the House to in the last two years to bring down deregulation, to bring down our businesses so that they can actually do their job. Again, this is the rhetoric mm -hmm. that really, frankly, Americans are tired of. They're tired of hearing from talk show hosts who just spout off about what they ever wanted to believe in instead of saying what is actually happening. And that's why the Democrats are torn up yeah. right now. Well, Congressman, let me press you on that point, though, because you talk about the good things you say the president has done, like create jobs. Shouldn't he be focused on creating more jobs? Health care, infrastructure, which is supposed to be the topic today. He wants to get the UMSCA, the, the Canada-Mexico Free Trade Agreement, done. How does it help his case, in your case, to actually get this work done for the American people if he walks out of a meeting with the Democrats. Well, it's, it's very interesting. It's so amazing. Why would the past be given or the blame be thrown at the president when you have the Speaker of the House actually accuse him basically of a crime today before she ever gets there? Yeah. The president is like anyone else. He wants to do business. He wants to try. But when you have people basically kicking sand in his face or accusing him of a crime, he's going to react. This president is passionate about the American people. He's passionate about putting Americans back to work. He's passionate about doing infrastructure. And what we have seen so far is the Democrats, including this Speaker, is passionate about keeping her job and telling everybody else what they done wrong and that's just the wrong idea they want to see him defeated mm -hmm. in 2020 instead of actually having an agenda here in the house i want to close on something that you've been passionate about which is investigating the investigators you released another transcript of these closed yeah. door interviews in the last 24 or so hours uh, loretta lynch the former obama attorney general where she basically says that james comey is not telling the truth she did not tell him to call the clinton email investigation a matter does james comey have a problem did he lie under oath I think he's got a lot to answer for, and I think lately he's been going around trying to tell everybody uh, that he's okay and that his version is right, because when this stuff comes out, it, you know, it really, for this matter, James Comey's 15 minutes are up. It's time for the people to see exactly what was going on, that he was a part of this cabal that was working against this president from day one, and he's trying to cover his tracks, because what's happening is, as we release transcripts, as more comes when the attorney general is actually looking at how this got started, uh, Jim Comey's uh, version of Captain America is going to become very embarrassing, I think, to the American public as it, they see further what he actually did. Is this part of the reason we're seeing more subpoenas from House Democrats? They're nervous about what Bill Barr and others may find out about what happened? I think their time is running out. I think what they're finding is that the Mueller report was just the first of this, and now those of us who've been investigating what actually happened here, as the Inspector General's report comes out later, as Mr. Durham continues his work, they're going to find out that there's a lot more at play here, and there was actually a concerted effort, it seems to be, at the candidate Trump and then President mm -hmm. Trump in these early years just to derail his presidency. Congressman, we appreciate you coming in.